What's that fucking, uh... Oh, I forget what it's called. There's like a sport in which you you play a game of chess and then you have a round of boxing and then you play chess again then you have another round of boxing. That sounds amazing. <laughs> oh, it's called chess boxing. Hybrid sport combines boxing with chess in alternating rounds. Look it up on Wikipedia. Chess boxing. <laughs> this is so <laughs> stupid. <laughs> Competitors may win by a knockout, achieving checkmate. <laughs> a four-minute chess round, three minutes of boxing. That's how it works, with a minute break between. Oh, so if God. either of them wins on any... That's just, it's, it seems to me to be terribly stupid, though. Because surely, like, as you beat each other up more and more, you're going to get worse at chess. Is that no. why? <clears throat> no. No. I think it works the other way round. As you, like, start beating your opponent in the strategy game of chess, their morale drops, and so when you're boxing them... (laughs) (laughs) It's on YouTube. World... Oh, my God. It's on fucking YouTube. World Chess Boxing Championship. (laughs) Oh, it's only got 73,000 views. How's it not got millions? Oh, this looks really slick, actually. That's in my comment. This it's got like really slick intro and graphics. What other sort of games do you think like complete opposites could they combine into like a hybrid sport? Rape Skittles. <laughs> <laughs> you want something incredibly nerdy and intellectual mixed with something incredibly violent and physical. Clay pigeon shooting and Scrabble. So Scrabble works, but you have to have something... Countdown something bad. combined with <laughs> rugby. Rape. <laughs> rape countdown. <laughs> it's just rape <laughs> anything. Rape Scrabble. Hello, and welcome to... to, 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 to. Letters from the Ogno. Can you hear the creaking of my headset? Just I think it might be ruining yeah, the effect. It doesn't sound very good. It sounds like clicking. Thoughts? Okay, here we go. Here's a question. This one's a question from Harry Shuffley. Hello, Harry. Do you have an easy way Hello, to revise Simon. for my GCSE? Oh, you're here! Hi, you? Harry! Hello! <laughs> <laughs> what does he want to help with? Sorry, sorry. He's sending <laughs> us an email about his GCSEs in June. So he's obviously sending the email to us very yeah. early in advance because he knows how long it takes to produce the average job. Wow, that's a true fan. I've tried loads of ways to revise but haven't really been able to keep any answers in my head. There we are, Simon. How did you revise for your exams? Did you have any, you know, any good advice? Okay. My tip is um, you should do what um, the guy in Memento did and just tattoo the answers all over your body so that way you can never forget. Even if you've got um, antigradal amnesia, you'll still be able to remember all of the, you know, what date William the Conqueror killed Prince Harold of, of Chutney. You'll remember all the, all the dates, all those important places and times and facts you know just tattoo every inch of your body with information unfortunately on the day of the exam you're going to have to go into the exam hall wearing nothing but a pair of speedos <laughs> so that you can actually read the problem is though so all, the, all the tattoos wouldn't you be disqualified though I, I would have thought that would have disqualified because you, you remember you weren't allowed to write like answers on your arms and stuff mm. were you in ballpoint pen you know, that's the same thing. No, but that wasn't a tattoo. You can say you can say it's your religion that you have to tattoo your life story on your body. I suppose you could tattoo and it you all can say, really well, small. You know, obviously like the Battle of Hastings was very important to me. 
Ah, that's true. That could work. Like a, a micro dot. Yeah. Do you remember those? Like a like spy movies used to have a micro dot. Yeah, with like loads and loads of information in it. It's like in the dot of the eye, in like a message, there would be like a secret message. You know, the 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 the, the actual message would be something really really boring, like you know Chinese Jaffa cake resupply information, and in the eye of probably the information, say, don't forget to dot the eyes. Yeah. It would be like a sim- and in the cross of the T, it will say all cross the T's. Yeah, well, I don't know. I think. I think the cheating thing is a bit too dodgy, you know? Because in exams these days, you're not even allowed to bring in those pencil cases that have um, times tables and stuff on them, you know? Well, we weren't back in my day. You had to have a transparent pencil case, you know? So they're they're pretty tight on those sort of things. I'm thinking of more like Darren Brown-style tricks to, like, input stuff into your brain, you know? Remember right. stuff. Have you got any of those? I think something something like a mnemonic... You know, coming up with mnemonics to help you remember things. So you have little songs and little rhymes. With your own ones. Yeah, you make your own up so that you can remember them. And make them about you. So, as you go into the exam and you're thinking, Oh God, you know, what date was the Battle of Hastings? And you'll remember it because you'll have like a song to do with the Battle of Hastings. Darren Brown's way of remembering things is really quite good. What he does is, you know about this, don't you Simon, the Darren Brown way of memorising like series of words and stuff series is yeah. what he does yeah. is he like chooses things like for example your routine that you have when you get up in the morning because people tend to have a routine when they get up in the morning they can draw it into their mind very close you know you get out of bed you look at your alarm clock <laughs> is that so he doesn't forget to take a shit in the morning no 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 <laughs> but people have like this... no, what he has a little mnemonic to help him remember what to do no listen okay Darren Darren brush your teeth Dare and have a poo. <laughs> Dare and eat some toast. La 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 do. No, it's not remembering what That's to do what in the he morning. Sings when he it's gets up in the morning. It's like so. For example, you have to remember, like, for exa- you know those games that you have where so your mum. I played this when I was a kid. Your mum brings out like a tray full of stuff, right? And it's got like a button, some paprika, uh, a whisk, a corkscrew, a hammer. Paprika. Paprika. In yeah, my house, stuff. they Some would never string, have been paprika a paper, in that house. A paper clip, never. Uh, Salt. A rolled up and that's paper. About it. Um, a packet of pork scratchings. You know all this stuff, and it's and then you have to try and remember as much of it as you can within like a minute, okay? And then she covers it up again and takes it away, and you have to write down as much as you can. Yeah, do you remember those memory games? Um, yeah. Darren Brown, the way he would do this is, right, he would, this is this is literally true, the way he would do, remember this, is he'd think of his normal bedroom routine. So he'd, he'd wake up, and the first thing he'd see on his pillow would be a packet of pork scratchings, okay, and then he'd turn over in his alarm clock, and on top of his what? alarm clock there would be, like, what? a paper clip. Is he a That's tune? How he'd remember it. <laughs> what the fuck? He wakes up in the morning, and there's pork scratchings on his pillow. Right. And then he'd go into the bathroom and he'd take a shit. He looks down into the bowl and there's paprika. A little jar of paprika there. Yeah, right. Okay, you get the idea. And so what you do is when you're trying to recall this stuff, because you've associated it with stuff, you can look back at your little story that you've written in your head and you can think of it as, you know, yeah. like, like, roll over and there's the um, okay. there's the pork scratchings. Well, I hope, that, the... I hope that helps you, Barry. Uh... <laughs> When he, Harry. Harry, even. Harry Shuffley. So, so it, yeah, now you'll remember the um, pork scratchings and the uh, paprika. I hope uh, I hope the exam that you've got is um, is something to do with pork scratchings and paprika. Otherwise, otherwise you're fucked. Do you remember any other mnemonics from your I don't really remember. Childhood. That's the funny fucking thing. I don't remember any mnemonics. Isn't that just? Isn't that ironic? Well, I remember one. I remember one for remembering which way the compass goes round when I was a kid. Was naughty elephants squirt water. That's north, uh, east, southwest. Naughty elephants <laughs> squirt water. Oh, that's so quite if people sweet. have mnemonics for stuff that you remember, um, send them in. We want to hear them because I think that would be pretty interesting. Right. Here's a long um, message from from someone called C.J. Tollins. Wow. That's a pretty cool name, isn't it? It is, isn't it? Hi, I'm C.J. Do you want to go home and I can fuck you? 
What'd you say about that? <laughs> yes, please, CJ. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, and now it turns out that he's like a 14-year-old massive nerd. He plays WoW. Right, it says, Dear Simon and Lewis, I've been an avid fan of the Yogpod since the beginning, but that is not why I'm writing to you today. I live in America, and yesterday I had a surprise guest come to my house. Living in America. Sorry, he had a surprise guest. When my sister was young, she had this best friend who moved to England, and she was sad. And guess who arrived at my house yesterday? Yes, it was her, but it seems she brought her boyfriend. He Aww. was a man who draws Spider-Man comics for Marvel. Oh, oh my God! I was That's amazed cool. how laid back he was. Anyway, throughout the night we were all relaxing and stuff, and we decided to go to McDonald's for a burger. During the ride, I decided what the heck and started to ask him questions about Jaffa cakes, Jammy Dodgers, Tina Barrett, and all that stuff. Since being from America, I haven't had a chance to experience any of it first hand. Oh my god. He laughed and told me all about them. So basically, then asked how I knew we're teaching things. Americans like all that they know about England. It's, it's just from us. We're the, their single source of information about so England. So this is a really odd situation. So what we've got is we've got a 14-year-old, probably, Yognaut, sitting in the back of a car in America, being driven by, I guess, an English... Man who writes Spider-Man comics, Stan Lee. Oh, Stan Lee. Yeah, the 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 fifty-five-year-old Spider-Man comics. He's a bit older than that. Who is the boyfriend of some teenage girl? Um, <laughs> of his sister's friend. Yeah. <laughs> so the sister is in the back, and her friend, another teenage girl who moved to England. Yeah, is his girl. The girl's probably okay. thinking, so "Oh God, listen to this kid. He's just going on about Jaffa cakes and." Stupid shit. You know, this is why I moved to England and I got myself a, mat- a mature man who draw comics for a living. <laughs> okay, maybe not that mature. Um, Did he have a question for us or is he just bragging that he's met someone? At that moment in the car, I played the yog pod over the car speakers and we spent the rest of the ride laughing our asses off. Well, me and him did. The two girls in the back looked like they were dying of plague. Oh, God. <laughs> That's what happens when... This is a warning. We should have it at the start of all of the podcasts. Warning, warning. This podcast can give girls the plague. <laughs> oh, dear. We don't want to be... That's terrible news. If any girls have got the plague... Um, if you're a girl... And you've got the plague from this... Stop listening now. Yeah, Just stop dangerous. listening right now if you're a girl. We don't want you to catch the plague. It's very contagious. So... If you think you may have the plague, um, seek me- medical attention immediately. Megatil. Uh, drink lots of water. Shut up. Okay. Jeff Jarzina sends a message. He continues, This is the part of the email where I ask you a really dumb question. <laughs> uh, what is your favourite spoon? No. <laughs> not asked any questions. What did he say? He says, The reason for my email is this. I recently watched your video on Arthur's baby and now I have it lodged in my head. I don't think anybody else has noticed that I keep mumbling oh. the lyrics to myself. Though. It's got a crush. Do me a favour. crush on Hannah. Do me a favour and do not reply to this email since this is an open work business email which I probably shouldn't be using. Huh? <laughs> So if I reply, brilliant. To him, will it just brilliant. go to his like help get desk sack. his work? That should be a yeah. way that you can like email everyone in his department all at once. Say hello. I hope you realise an employee of yours is listening to podcasts at work instead of selling insurance to old ladies. Scone insurance okay. um... or something. Pink wafer insurance in case they like trip over. As they're coming out of the kitchen with a tray of pink wafers. If they trip over and they fall on the floor and the pink wafers go everywhere. Uh, Where are they going to get new pink wafers from? You're talking about That's those... That's why um, they need pink wafer insurance. Those really dry biscuits that are like... You can only eat about two mm. of them before your mouth they totally They are so dry, dry yeah. aren't they? Yeah. Jesus. <laughs> I think they're made out of sand. <laughs> uh... Tom Nicholson, I am Dave exclamation mark Yognaut. Hello, Dave. Hello, Dave. Salute. Um, Thank you, Dave. 
Absolutely. My friend recently came back from the Xmas break at uni, and we had a brilliant idea to make a Yogpod drinking game. This would involve listening to every Yogpod in a row with a couple of friends with typical drinking game rules. Oh, God. I was wondering what sort of rules we should use to make it more exciting. For example, does it, whenever we thought of whenever the Queen comes in to say a word, take a drink. Or whenever anyone says, brilliant, take a drink. I do realise by the time you read this email, my friend will probably have gone back to uni, so the whole thing is a bit pointless. <laughs> Mm. Amazing, amazing, <laughs> brilliant, 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 brilliant. So, hello. <laughs> no. So, I mean, what, what, what additional rules do you think we should um, come up with, possibly? Every time we mention Jaffa cake, you have to eat a Jaffa cake. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! But you can't go. Over Every from... time you eat a Jaffa cake, you have to eat another Jaffa cake. Hold on. Hold on, this is becoming dangerous. It's not so much a drinking game, it's just sitting down, listening to a podcast and just scoffing a whole load of Jaffa cakes. Okay. That's it really. That's a good uh, that's a good one. What was that game that I played one time? Uh, oh for fuck's sake. Let me guess, you have to game. sit upside down with two spoons balanced on the backs of your knees <laughs> and you have to sing the national anthem. Yeah. And the first person to fall over and say Oh, Geronimo loses. Yes. Because that's the stupid kind is, of fucking game no, you play. It's like, you know, oh, definitely. I play it with people called, you know, Rollo and Jenny, and they have like a Land Rover. Tarquin and Felicity. The Felchers, that's their surname. Tarquin Felcher married a Felicity fuckface. <laughs> it's a bit less <laughs> subtle, but I think it still works in the theme. Okay, there's another question for Hannah. Oh, God. You ready, Hannah? It's from Tyler Williams. Okay. Um, in Alabama, US. I would like some advice for Lamadia. See, people call you Lamadia. They don't quite understand. I don't know why that is, but a lot of people... Can't they just that. call me Lom? Isn't it just <laughs> easier? My girlfriend has sent nude pics of herself to another man via text message. See... Hannah, this is the sort of thing that's now equivalent to, like, second base. Back when we were young, you know, first base was, like, kissing. Second base was, like, mm-hmm. put your hand down their pants. You know, no, 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 no. You got it wrong. God. <laughs> what? This, oh, sorry. This explains a lot, Luke. Fit forward. <laughs> <clears throat> sorry, sorry. Well, don't take my advice. Anyway, the point is that this is now... It's hand up the this jumper. This is now the equivalent... Oh, was it hand up the jumper? Sorry, the cardigan. Second base is now sending nude pictures of yourself to someone else's boyfriend, you know, or whatever. Sexting, kind of like... it's called. Yeah. Is it? It's uh, a hip new thing. So if, if any yogurts receive her... naked pictures of their 14 year old <laughs> girlfriend, please don't email them. Do not send them to us. Com. We will be arrested and have to <laughs> go in prison for ages. You'll be arrested really don't do that. because I think that's. It's like your name on that email account. Oh, yeah, so you'll be arrested. Owned. We'll report you're you going to, to the um, internet police. Uh, when I confronted her about these texts, she denied it. I confronted her again, and she confessed. She said sorry tons of times and swears to never do it again. Should I forgive her? I really care for her, but I've never been in a situation like this. So, his think, girlfriend... Hannah? Was sending pictures of herself? Yes, herself, not him. She hasn't been sending naked pictures of her boyfriend to her other ex-boyfriend or whatever. No, she's... Why would she be doing that? Why is she sending naked pictures of herself to an ex-boyfriend? I don't is think it's an, ex- an ex-boyfriend It's just a random man. No, hang on, it's, it's not her ex, it's just another random man. Um... So, Hannah, what would you do in this situation if your boyfriend was taking pictures of his knob and sending them to... Another girl... How would you react? The thing is, I've known this to go both ways. You go both ways? No, I have known the situation to go both ways. (laughs) You could could forgive her, um, or you could just say, fuck off. Um, I would suggest forgiving her and seeing how it goes for a week or two. Um, Is that what you would do? She sounds kind of kinky. She does, doesn't she? I mean, she sounds like the kind of person who... It's fun to be going out with for at least, you know, your teenage years. Is she actually putting out? That's an important question. 
Uh, but is. I would assume so if she's sending nudie pics to other people. Wow. She sounds yeah. like the kind of quite sexual You'd, oh, girl. Jesus. This is just a little bit creepy, isn't it? I mean, how old are these people Maybe. that were involved in this? Hang on, I've got the solution. I've got the solution. Take some naked pictures of yourself and send them to one of her girlfriends. No. Yeah. To her mother. <laughs> <laughs> What you want to do is you want to write your girlfriend's name on your willy, take a picture of it, and then send it to her mother. <laughs> Try and put a bit of lipstick on, your, oh. on like, the end of your knob as well. Oh, my God. Write it on in the God. Lipstick. <laughs> well, there you go. Oh, that's, 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 that's brilliant advice. <laughs> Great advice. <laughs> Make sure you follow that advice. Can't possibly fail. Uh, Jimmy Sandell has sent us a message saying, I thought I learn you some Swedish, so here it comes. Feel free to use these words in your show. Does he actually show well, how to pronounce any okay, of these words? Okay, he's put... No. This doesn't really make any sense. Okay, he's just put a load of things. He's put... Right, he's put a column of words under the heading Swedish. Yeah. And a column of words under the heading English. Yeah. Okay. But under the Swedish column, it says slut... Okay. <laughs> and then in the English column, it says, it says end. Now, I don't know whether that means that... Uh. He... So he's, like, teaching us words in Swedish that sound like swear words in English, but actually mean at real words. Of, at the end of a Swedish movie, at the end of a Swedish movie... Yeah. You know, like, French films, it says fin. At the end of a Swedish movie, it says slut. Yeah, end. Right? That must be what it is. So apparently the English word, Swedish word for edge, like the edge of something, is cant. Oh my goodness. It's awfully close to the rudest word possible. The uh, English word union, union like the British, the union of Britain, Great Britain and the Commonwealth, is um, fac, right? (laughs) (laughs) F-A-C-K. <laughs> you, you unioning edge, you unioning edge. Um, the union is fuck it. Uh, speed, like is, you know, speed is fart. Oh dear. Uh, entrance, entrance, is uh in fart. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the Swedish word for p is kiss. I'm not sure this is true. This can't be true, can it? Kiss is the Swedish word for pee. I'm just going for a kiss. I just googled the phrase Swedish kiss. Um, Sounds a bit odd to me. (laughs) Har. (laughs) What the fuck is that? Pronounced whore. Har. Apparently means oh hair. Yeah, I should have just said whore, shouldn't I? But spelled... Hair on your head, in Sweden, they call it whore. Yeah, yeah. So now we've learned some Swedish, Simon. Can you remember any of this Swedish lesson? Wow. Hedge. Well done. Good. Which means yes, doesn't it? Hedge. No, it means hey. Oh. Hey, hello. You're answering my question. Oh, there we are. Thanks, Jimmy, for that. Yeah, thanks a lot. Swedish lesson. Cheers, man. Cheers. It's 2010, it's a new century, no, decade, it's a new decade. I like how you actually pronounce the uh, the year correctly. You don't say 2010, you just say 2010, which is how you're supposed to do it. Yeah, I think a lot of people are going to be saying 2010 for a while, but it'll catch on, like 2010. The other thing which we've heard a lot about recently is what people want to call the last decade. Because a lot of people are saying they don't want to call it the noughties. Whereas, mm. I mean, that's the only thing you can call it, really, isn't it? The noughts. It just seems a little bit insipid. It's a little bit silly, isn't it? Other people want to call it, like, the 20 hundreds. I just think that sounds so stupid. Well, it was the 19 hundreds. You know, it's just not catchy at all. I mean, if you were, like, making decade, a pop uh, century. album, of like a classic pop album, right... It's like classic hits of the 80s, classic hits of the 90s. 
It can't be classic hits of the 20 zeros. It can't be that. No. It cannot be that. But it what's this fucking decade going to be noughties. called? People are saying it's going to be called the teenies. The fucking teenies. No, I don't think it could be called the teenies. Well, that's what people were saying about filthy. the noughties. They were like, oh, there's no way. It's not going to catch on. But nobody came up with anything better. So it's stuck. It's not really the teenies, though, is it? Because it doesn't. that doesn't include the first three years. The 11 teen... Oh. 2011 teen, 2010 teen, 11 teenies, 2012 no, teen. What? It's got to be the tens, the the tennies, the tenors. We have to add fucking you know ease at the end. It's the tennies. It'll be followed by the twenties. Ease. I don't know. Fuck me. This is too difficult. I can't. This is just too big for one man to solve. Happy New Year, everyone. <laughs> yeah, Happy New Year, everyone. We started off with a, a massive so... rant from Lewis. It's a, it's a typical start <laughs> to the year. There we go. Did you hear, this is this is topical news here, right? This is important, mm-hmm. relevant news. Um, in England, we've had an awful lot of snow over Christmas and New Year. And we have... Yeah. God, that was a bit distracting. We have, um, there was a New Year's Eve party that took place in a pub, which is apparently the highest pub in the country. So it's on top of the, like, the highest point. Wow. Where where there's a pub. So it's up on top of some fucking hill, where it's been snowing heavily. Oh shit, (laughs) some... Hello. Welcome back. Right, so resume the story. Um, <laughs> we just got kicked from uh, Mulch's vent. That's the. Uh... So where fu- where the fuck were we? So yeah, these uh these cross country runner guys from Leeds Uni went up to this pub on the top of a hill for New Year's Eve. They got snowed in for two days, with snow snow drifts up to seven feet tall. Um, Good lord! So they were completely. All the roads were impassable. Some people joined them who uh, got stranded in their cars up there as well. So I don't know if they had enough beer and you know pork scratchings to survive for two days. <laughs> I'm not sure what happened. Can you imagine only eating like small packets of mini cheddars <laughs> and drinking Fosters for like two days? That's kind of what people do at New Year. They buy loads of party food. They have a bit of a party. And they have to eat the leftovers for the next two days. So it's not that atypical, really. Man, it, it must be mental, though. Like, the thing is, we've got some of these pubs around where I live, you know, um, in the countryside. There's, like, pubs that you have to walk to to access. You can't drive to them. And that's sort of... It's, to me, it's quite astonishing that these pubs actually do business, you know? When the only way you can reach them is by having a half-an-hour walk... <laughs> um, so I can totally appreciate that this pub does exist somewhere in you know the fields of Northumbria or somewhere. And these poor guys getting stuck in. I mean, it's a little bit like a zombie sort of apocalypse sort of scenario, isn't it? You're saying it's like a Shaun of the Dead. That's basically what you're getting. Yeah, at, yeah. yeah. They're stranded in the yeah, pub, that's what it by zombies. Except it's not zombies. It's snow. Seven foot snow drift. Which isn't quite is as threatening, really, is it? I mean, is that totally insurmountable then? <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't fancy walking through a seven foot tall snow drift. No. Not even with those shoes that have uh, tennis rackets strapped to the bottom of them. I wouldn't even try it in those. No. Well, you'd probably be alright. I don't think you'd, like, sink through. You know, these things do compact usually fairly well. At least from my experience going skiing, I found that you know, large amounts of snow isn't... You don't just sort of get sucked up in it, you know? So you like your skiing. You're used to the snow. You love it. Instead of going on holiday to a beach, you go on holiday to where it snows, where the weather's shitty. And you're like, oh, this is lovely. Mmm, I love being cold. Let me put another jumper on. Oh, this is the way to relax. Do you know what, though? Sometimes you can't have coziness, Simon. You can't have that feeling of lovely warmth and being all cosy if you don't have a little bit of cold to begin with, you know? Like, for example, if, 
you know, it's it's really cold in your room and you snuggle up in your bed and you're all warm and it's like really, oh, it feels so nice. But you can't have that if it wasn't cold. If it was always, you know, mild weather, you'd never have that pleasure. So what you're saying is there can't really be light without the dark. Exactly. And in the same way, the as you know, you can't enjoy a, a really nice tasting steak if that's the only thing you eat. You know, if you have to eat some baked beans occasionally to make the fillet to steak taste delicious. Yeah. Man cannot live on Jaffa cakes alone. Exactly. You have to space them out, you know. You have to have them on a You'd special occasion. You can't just continually stuff your face with uh, Jaffas. You have to ration yourself to, like, just one packet per day. Yeah, yeah. You can't, like, have a packet for every meal, because that's just too much. So... What did you have you to just have the 12. Get up to. Space them out throughout the day. Like, have one an hour. <laughs> oh, it's one o'clock Jaffa cake time. Oh, it's two o'clock Jaffa cake time. <laughs> you have, like, a special alarm that goes off every hour to remind you that it's Jaffa time. It's Jaffa o'clock. Uh, so, what did you get up to at New Year, man? You were in a pub, weren't you, as well? But you weren't I, I Yeah, I went to a little pub... In Putney, where it was five pounds to get in, which isn't a lot of money really. And for that five pounds, there was a buffet which I didn't eat anything from. There were lovely barmaids in tight little nurses' outfits, um, which I I didn't nibble on. And there were jelly shots, which I may have partook of. Jelly shots. I don't really and know what they are. It's like vodka, vodka jelly. So you've got like a little a shot of vodka in jelly form. It's amazing. Have you never have a, had a vodka I've jelly? I've never had vodka before? jelly shots. No, I think I'm I've missed out on that. Oh some, my somehow. god! Yeah, I was at my friend's house in Oxford, and there was about eleven of us. So we were sitting around playing like games, like um, some like Balder Dash. Have you ever played that? It's quite good. chess boxing. No, 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 no. Playing chess boxing, Pictionary rape. <laughs> we were playing a little bit of Pictionary, but we were playing a sort of a, 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 an alternative version of Pictionary, right? And what you had to do was, you had a team of two people, okay? And one of them sort of looked at a picture of something. So, say, for example, like a pie, okay? And then they have to put a blindfold on and tell someone else how to draw a pie so the other people want, and, and the drawer have to guess it. Um, without using the word pie or, or any pie-related things like crust. You can't say anything like that. So you have to, like, say, draw a, a, a round, flat cylinder and then draw, like, a, a, a crenellations around the top of the cylinder edge. What's a crenellation? <laughs> I don't understand. Like a cut, like... How do I draw yeah, that? That's the kind of thing we're talking about, you know? And they just end up with a perfect... Perfect, like watercolor of a Jaffa cake. <laughs> Is this it? Is this close enough? So that was quite fun because it's quite a fun game, and we did a lot of you know fairly entertaining games like that. There's a couple of other games that my friend um, George has, which are sort of like physical games. So one of them is um, you get like a broom, okay, a, like a br- long broomstick, okay, and you hold on to it. Uh, at each end with your hand, so you hold it out in front of you. And what you have to do is, you have to keep holding onto this broomstick with both hands, your left hand and your right hand, right? And you need to put the whole it... night. That's no, the game. The idea is to <laughs> to to put it around your whole body, okay? So you step over it while you're still holding onto it, and then you twist it round so it's back in front of your body. Oh again. God! And it's really ha- difficult to do. You have to like twist your body really awkwardly, and some people can do it, some people can't. Um, so that's that's one which we have. The other one is what you do is you get these are sort of drinky games, I guess, in a way. Um, <laughs> Where did she get that game? From? I don't know. Was there a book? Probably you know, like games with brooms. Yeah, it's like scouting games. You know, like that kind of games, dangerous games for boys or something. Scouting for boys. Yeah, that sort of thing. Um, the other one is you get like a cereal packet, like a packet of cocoa pops or something. Uh, other cereals other cereals are available. Are available. And <laughs> And you put it on the floor, okay, and people have to take it in turns to go down, like bend down to the Cocoa Pops packet and pick it up with their teeth, 
Okay, and every time someone picks it up, they can rip off like an inch off the packet. Okay, so it gets shorter and shorter. So people are like trying to pick it up off the floor with only their teeth. Um, and you know, different people have different strategies on how to do it. Like you can do the splits, or you. There you go. That's quite a fun game. Um, this is so weird. This is so strange. Just people. Game Eleven where... people sat round, satting around in a living room in Oxford. <laughs> Yeah, sitting around. Very drunk. Just picking up a box of cereal with their mouth. Yeah. Yeah. That's just that is so odd. Um and then Why don't you give everyone a little box of cereal, like the variety pack thing? Just everyone can have one of those. And they can eat it. They can have like a bowl and some milk. <laughs> There's another game uh what's it called? I I can't remember what it's called. I can't remember what any of these things are called, but this one you get like a, a pack of cards, okay, and the cards have on them things like elbow to elbow, um, knee to to nose, ear to to shoulder, whatever, right? Ass to ass. Some of them would be like that. And what you do is you have your team, so you and your partner have to trap the card between those two. So if it says like elbow to elbow, you have to trap the card between your elbows, and then you pick up another card. And you have to, like, contort Jesus your body. Jesus Christ! What was the theme for this New Year's party? Was it, like, the 1800s? <laughs> what the fuck? What do you mean, what the fuck? That's quite a popular... <laughs> we played some gramophone records. <laughs> we got out a hoop <laughs> and a stick. We caught a ball in a cup a few times. The ball in the cup game is fantastic fun. Oh, my fun. God. I suggest you try it. <laughs> I guess it beats, you know, being sat in front of the telly watching... Jules Holland, his hooter nanny. That he does oh every my god! Year. Yeah, that's so terrible. Why? That's the only thing he's famous he's for. He's still doing it? it. We checked before we went out, and it was. I on. checked as well. I thought, is he still doing this? And he was. Jeez. It's like, man. I mean, that's the only thing he's possibly even like known for yeah. anymore. He, I guess he was known for something before he started doing it. He did the tune. But he's done it every year since. Which is like um, a music show. Because he's a musician, he plays the piano and stuff. He's quite a, an accomplished jazz musician. Do you play any instruments? Um, I play the lute. I lute perps. Oh. Uh, oh. Um, did, you, did, you, did your parents make you play any instruments when you were younger? Like the flute or anything? No. No. I asked, I wanted to get like a keyboard for my birthday or something many years ago and they just wouldn't get me one. Aww. They didn't, I don't think they like noise very much. Aww. They didn't want me playing anything. They gagged me a few times. Aww. And, uh, threw me in the cellar. Aww. They wouldn't let me make any noise. Well, maybe one day Simon will be able to get you a keyboard everyone, in your childhood dream. Everyone had to fulfilled. speak in like the quietest whisper. In the house. If we ever had guests round, they weren't allowed to speak. Or, I mean, not even shout. No way. Everyone had to speak in the lowest, quietest whisper. Could I have another cup of tea and the Java cake, please? Shh. It's like being in a library. Really? That sounds terrible, man. Did you go home at Christmas as well? Was it like that when you went home? It was, yeah. Just had to sit in silence and watch uh, Buster Keaton oh my God. on TV because it is silent. <laughs> Did you play like a gramophone record as well? No, it's too much noise. Oh, sorry, of course. Um, of course. The scratching of the needle is too loud. Uh, why is that? Do they have like headaches or something? Or we've got or... a dog at home and they had to remove its bark. <laughs> How was that? Operation before had to have an o- had to have an operation, yeah, at the vets, and they took out his bark. <laughs> this hoarse rasp of hot air comes out of his mouth when he's excited. It's like <laughs> it's like that instead of barking. <laughs> it's like a, a wheezy old man. Yeah. That's such an odd thing to have at this silent house <laughs> god no but for me like my dad's slightly going deaf and my my grand's a bit deaf so it's sort of always at high volume you know every conversation is held above normal volume if i put like earplugs in the conversation is normal you know god it's like the, the exact opposite 
to my house. Maybe if we like combined the two, it oh would be. Oh God! It'd be chaos. Our parents meeting for the first time, Simon. What would that be like? They'd probably like end up being swingers and just cop off with each other, and we'd be step brothers. <laughs> what? what? <laughs> I've seen a picture of your dad, and he's quite a handsome man. So it'd be like that time you met my uncle, and I was like. And you said, what did you say? What did you say when you met my What did my I uncle? say? Um, I made a really funny voice, didn't I? I did a funny voice and I kept talking in it to embarrass you. Hello. Like that. Hello. Yeah. And he yeah. said, he doesn't normally talk uh, like that. Simon doesn't normally like talk like that. Do you, Simon? Do your and normal said, voice, Simon. Do oh, your normal voice. Yeah. I went, this is my normal voice. Hello. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember that and you very were just well. So embarrassed. Oh god, that was terrible. That was very, very embarrassing. You're bright red. Oh. oh, I'm remembering it now. Good God, Simon. Your uncle loved it though. My uncle's a nice guy. I like. He didn't think it was weird um... at all. So anyway, that's that's all we've got time okay. for uh, Next... this week. Oh. The, oh, um, okay. Letters Fuck. from the Yognauts. Please send us your. Stuff, yogscast at gmail.com. We'll yogscast at gmail.com. Send us your idiotic questions. Maybe, you know, someone's got an interesting anecdote about meeting the Queen and having tea with her. Or maybe, um, maybe a friend of yours has choked to death on a Jaffa cake um, and you had to give them the kiss of life. Um... Or maybe you're Tina Barrett and you've got nothing better to do than download podcasts from the internet because your singing career is in the toilet. Um, we want to hear from you. Points at you. Salute. You. Yognauts. I'm still pointing. Point. Point. You. There we go. You can use that. That's good. Yeah, good I can use that. Definitely. Uh, okay. I think that's it. It's... <laughs> We're all yogged out. So, thank you for listening, and <laughs> oh, see you next time. On Goodbye, the... everyone. Pod. Thanks for listening. Farewell. Bye-bye. Goodbye. Take care now. Careful. Careful, that bus is coming. Get out of the way. Come on, move back a bit. That's it. Watch yourself. Do you think anyone's actually died listening to the yog pod? Well, we wouldn't know about it, would we? Yeah, they've... they're listening to their iPod. Well, yeah, I mean, I guess they wouldn't email in. <laughs> Angry from Cheltenham. I'm writing in to complain about your podcast. I was listening to it whilst waiting for the bus, and I accidentally stepped in front of it and died. I'm most disappointed. Yours, Angry, Cheltenham. Well, um, Angry from Cheltenham, I'm sorry to, to hear about that. <laughs> um, I hope you get well soon. I hope so too. I think that would be brilliant. <laughs> Good. Good. Farewell. Hello. Your Majesty. We're saying bye again. Oh yeah, we need we've, to. We've already said bye. We need to sort of check in. What? We need to sort of check in on? with Her Majesty. How's she doing? Oh God. Um, I don't think she's been well. I think uh, Her Majesty, Her Madge. Um, she likes to be called Her Madge with the vag. She um, she's had swine flu recently. Um. So yeah, she's been a bit sick. She's been coughing and spluttering and vomiting and she's had a bit of diarrhoea oh, as well. Um, it's been terrible. Terrible. If you walk into Buckingham Palace, it smells like a fucking abattoir. <laughs> oh, for Christ's sake. <laughs> that was a bit too blue. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. How do you think we're doing with the swearing? We're doing too bad. I don't think we've been swearing that much. Oh, I did say fuck face earlier. <laughs> that might be... Yeah.